Big occasion players, one and all superstars of the game on this uh, Doug Nichols round. And we've got a couple of Sherons there. Uh, Damo, you've got them. They're, they're fantastic. They've been designed by former AFL and VFL players playing still at the moment, Ben Davis. Design focusing on telling the story of the connection through the game, speaking to Indigenous Australian men and women who've had a monumental influence, as we've just seen in those highlights, and they're passing a leadership onto future generations. 15% goes to the Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Agency. You can head to Sharon.com.au. Get a look at it, it's fantastic. Oh, that one. Yeah, what a beautiful ball. Okay. Jimmy, you ready to go? Sure am. Right, time for the medallion club. The Coleman medal, the Norm Smith medal, Brownlow medal is Jimmy Bartell. Sydney take on the Blues at the SCG on Friday night. What a game it's going to be uh, yeah, Jimmy, Friday night. It's kick absolutely it over sensational, you, Jimmy. Let's see your skills. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> still going. Oh, one touch on the chest. Hey, better than that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what a kick. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the midfields. Uh, the two midfields of these two sides, Jim, and they are deep, don't they, go these two sides. And you know, you've got the toughness of Carlton, plus I think Sam Walsh, and then the, they've got everything the Sydney Swans. Number one contested side in the last four weeks. They've got some serious grunt around the stoppages, and this is pure class. Uh, they are able to hit the scoreboard. Obviously, everyone focusing on these two guys, but they bat incredibly deep, and I might fit in here after my yeah. kick to Ed. And the teams, <laughs> what about the spread of the Sydney Swans and what they've been doing the opposition team? So there's Oscar, uh, sorry, Justin McInerney. So Fremantle will go inside. As soon as there's a turnover, they are off and away. Jim, how, how do teams counter this? It's speed and it's decision-making, but it's everyone joining in. You even look uh, off, off the ball here. Everyone lengthens really quick. This is the Chad who can play forward, uh, you know, as well as Heaney and a few others there for the Swans. But it's just that team uh, knowledge that as soon as you get it, spread. That's McInerney here. He's just off. And the rest of them spread and lengthen. So once you get the advantage, you keep the advantage all the way down the ground. That's why their numbers just stack up across the field. And having so many midfielders who can play forward is just such a weapon for the Sydney Swans. But Carlton have Sam Walsh. If he can do more of this, Jim, and can kick more goals, that was his first goal of the season. Uh, he, he, he's someone that can upset the apple cart with the Sydney Swans. This is toughness and courage. I know it's early in the game, but he's just ability to just grit his teeth and get to the next contest. And he just blows past uh, a lot of the opposition week in, week out. Gives the big Hulk flex on the end. He deserves to do that. Got Carlton away. I love when Cripps goes forward as well. And just keep asking the opposition more questions as a midfield group. Will Hayward's kicked eight goals in the last two weeks. Tom Papley's one of the best small forwards in the game and then we're going to chat about some unsung Carlton players who are finding their way in the game and the Carlton defence who have to play on these guys Jim. Yeah I really liked uh, some of these Carlton players as we bring up their highlights sh shortly. Chincotta went to Pickett who you highlighted uh, last week in the Dean Club. When Pickett plays well Melbourne win and Chincotta had him for a lot of the time. His speed off the mark and power. Boyd is tough. He, the, the thing about these guys, and you throw in Cowan as well, they're incredibly disciplined. They use their direct opponent as a starting point and try and make their way from there. I know some defenders are attacking, but these guys play the old play on, play off. Wonder if Chincotta will go to Papley or Haywood and Boyd and Cowan. So those three, who do they get in the mix for the Swans? Will be exciting matchups. Yeah, they give their absolute all, and I'm looking to see where's the weakness in the Sydney Swans. And this is probably the only one I can find to say. Come September, on grand final day or a big prelim, can Logan McDonald, Joel Amati and Hayden McLean stand up? So this is probably the only area of the Sydney Swans that I'm sort of questioning a little bit. They're getting by at the moment with other players and Smalls kicking the goals, but that's the question mark I have on the Swans. Yeah, just with Amati too, he's often the first one subbed as well. So yeah. there's going to have to be games towards the end of the year. He's got to play the full game so they can see what it looks like with all three going because what happens in a big game another player goes down and you have to keep him on the field. We can't do a Carlton game without talking about Harry and Charlie. And it's for this reason, I think, with no McCartan, who's uh, still out with concussion, Aaron Francis is the next one in. And I thought he got exposed a few times. So I think they have to be smart. How can they isolate Aaron Francis in this game? Yeah, keep pulling back and keep going on the lead. I think the other week we highlighted when Charlie just puts the hand up. You actually play into people's hands like Francis because they want you just to stay down, get help from the opposition. But when we see Charlie and Harry on fire, it's that push off and it's move into the footy. One's over 200 centimetres in Mackay. And Kerno, we know, when he launches the footy, he's pretty tough to stop. You're tipping the Swans at the SCG? I am. Uh, nine out of the last ten, Carlton's lost at the SCG, so I'm going to say the Swans. Yeah, I'm with the Swans as well. The common medal, the Norm Smith medal, Brownlow medal, is Jimmy Bartell. Thank you, Lloyd. 
there's not many rivalries left in football, but this is one. The GWS Giants and the Bulldogs, they don't like each other and they take each other on on Saturday afternoon at Giants Stadium. And let's take a look at the history between these two clubs, Jimmy, where they've gone toe-to-toe. Probably their second favourite game in recent history, uh, the Dogs there, apart from the grand final. Toby, with the now rule that you can't put the boots up there, I think that's Dalhousie cops of some studs in the face. And this is the one that really kicked it off. It's the bont bumped uh, Haynes. It actually hurt his throat here. The next game they played, it was on for young and old. And there's a genuine dislike. I know we love to build up rivalries to say they don't like each other. Maybe just gave him a little tickle around the face there. Scratched his beard, a little beer tickle here. Might have went near the eyes. But there's genuine dislike. And uh, they go at each other. And the Giants. So what's going wrong at the GWS Giants, Jimmy? So the pressure's actually good. So when you look at the pressure factor, you think, oh, the energy and effort's there. But it comes down to system and your ability to beat that initial pressure from the Giants. And the opposition's getting past that little bubble really well at the moment. So you look at these numbers, opposition inside forward 50s, the differential and the points against. So the tackles, they're getting in, they're uh, applying pressure, but if you can break that bubble, you're able to score against the Giants. So when we play this out a little bit more, it's highlighted. This is Jai Caldwell here. The initial pressure here from the Giants is fantastic. Next one in, players come in, the pressure, but Caldwell just stands up in the tackle, gets that handball free. Heppel finds the little one forward of the contest. Now look at the amount of Giants near you there, Lloydy. That's yeah. pretty much a third of your side in one little pocket of the field. When we look up here, this is ultimately what the opposition wants. You're playing half ground footy, 2v2, and look out defenders. You've got your backs to the game, and it's very difficult to defend. And this man Langford, who we all love watching play footy, just goes to work. And you're able to isolate the opposition. So if you can break that initial pressure of the Giants, you get opportunities forward of the footy. Fantastic vision of that. And that's what the Western Bulldogs have to try to do. Get some isolation. 1v1s inside forward 50. And I know they kicked a big score against Richmond last week, but they were jumping into each other the Western Bulldogs last week. So here, here is obviously Norton and then you've got Hugo Hagen and, and the Darcy. So they come together a lot and jump into each other. You've got to hold out. So in the end, you've got three players who are big targets all together. This one just smashes into the back of Darcy. Don't do that. You've got to hold your player out more often because the Giants want Buckley and they want Taylor together. This was much better as the game wore on. Get one player up high, roll around and hit the next player back. This is a good example of what the Dogs need to do. Get one of their players up high, roll off, and you've got Darcy and Eugle Hagen with isolation. Yeah, because defenders want you to come together because if someone can get off their direct opponent, and that might even be Iden as the third one up with Buckley and Taylor, at least then you create a mess and you can create a stoppage. Giants at home for me, and you yeah, will go for the, the Giants, Giants. Of course, uh, the MCG. I think they're there for the taking. Potentially Collingwood, if uh, the Crows you know, are good enough in this game, we want to show Dacos and also Rankin, two superstars who'll go at it. Most likely at the centre bounce, and he was exquisite last week. Isaac Rankin. Yeah, everything he touched turns to gold. He, yeah, I think he's in the top ten for uh, the footy being kicked inside. Uh, forward 50 they retain or score but he just takes the tackler on and, and when you win the footy and he wins it cleanly he actually draws one or two players so players are drawn which means your teammates are released in a lot of space so that's where you get full full toll for it but that pick up there hurt my hamstrings watching it was unbelievable at full pace resulted in a goal late in the game and here's Ed's favourite golden child Nick Dacos everything he does is turns to, to gold as we know because he can take the tackle on this handball actually goes to himself through about two or three players but he takes the tackle on, draws players, and he's always looking off the line with his ball yeah, use. Best on ground. Would have six mm. Brownlow votes, you'd think, the last couple of weeks. Jimmy, you've seen something in the Crows where it can look good, but also poor off half-back. Yeah, so they were super dynamic last week. Kicked seven goals from the back 50, and this is the Crows we've been screaming out for. Fast ball movement. This is what made them the number one scoring side last year. Everyone joining in. Look at it. Four to the footy. And what we highlighted before, 2v2, good luck. Rankin picks the eyes out of it and keys and Walker play two on one. And that's how you score really easy goals. But the flip side of it is you've still got to transition the other way. We've highlighted Berry and McCluggage, and this is Matt Crouch. Now, just as this plays out, the spread from the opposition can hurt them as well. So you've got to play both sides of the footy and defend. Unbelievable kick here from McCluggage on the left foot follows Cameron. But this is Crouch still jogging through the middle. And we play this one final one. This is McCluggage right down here. And this is not a fast edit. We've sped up a little bit of it. But look at the amount of time. You've got to get back and transition. And that's everyone. And this is what Matthew Nix wants. Everyone defends together. They're trying. They've filled up really well. But look at this. There's two guys just walking through the middle. This is right on three-quarter time. And just walking. And the spray the skipper dishes out is warranted.
Good vision. And this is the why they're a chance. They're a big chance. At, I know Damo's tipped the Crows this week and he's in good form with his <laughs> tipping because uh, th this is the injuries. Uh, uh, sorry, this is a player out from last year's grand final side. So there's been massive change at Collingwood. Uh, and if they had a win, they have to keep bringing the pressure they've been bringing. They're the number one pressure side just about in the last five weeks. Collingwood, here it is. So they've gone from 10th to 1st from those first three weeks where they weren't playing too well. They've gone from 10th to 1st, tackle differential 6th to 1st, and then they've gone with five wins from their last six weeks. So The DNA is back. The DNA is back, and that's why I'm on the pies at the MCG this weekend. And this is it at their best. When they're in this mood, that's when the fast play comes off the back of this pressure. And they're so experienced too. They can manage the clock from these situations. If they need to speed it up from out of here, they can go fast. If they need to shut the game down, they just create another ball up. You're on the pies as well, Jim? Correct. Yep. Damo, the crows for you. Yeah, no great confidence, Lord, <laughs> but uh, I reckon they're uh, going to give them one more chance. Mm. And the go is a chance to play this week as well, so he might come back in. So we'll see what happens there if he gets through training and the likes of it. But uh, looking forward to that one. The tactics of uh, Craig McRae over the last couple of weeks have been fantastic. Let's see how it all goes.